Got All it. right. Okay, now. Hello, praise the Lord. I'm Joanne with from the Lisa's these the of these ministries. And I got a great topic for today. But before we get started, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. Pastor Jeff, would you like to say a prayer for us? Hey. Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word, Lord God. We I pray that you speak through Pastor Joanne, that you would open up our ears and our eyes and our heart to hear your word and to apply it to our lives. And we thank you, Lord God, for being here among us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I remember last week we discussed that we would like to start out with testimonies. I think they're important because you put the enemy under your feet. Amen. With your testimonies and it strengthens those that are watching. So I will start that one of my friends got saved. So hey. I'm excited. Always when, when you bring someone to the Lord, it's a, a joyful occasion. So I wanted to share that. And I know Annette has things to share too. So. <laughs> well, I want to thank the Lord that he protected me from that fall. Well, yeah. I mean, yes, I did get some bruise in my arm and my legs, which is now cleared out. And I thank God that he didn't, I didn't hit my head uh, anywhere. And I just want to thank for his goodness. He, he brought me home <laughs> and here I am. And... Got to tell that story about coming home because that really was God protecting you. <laughs> what? Well, you you know, have to tell the story about how you came home. Because oh. that was the Lord protecting you. <laughs> yes, he was He was protecting me because the first time the nurse stopped me from even leaving. But the second time, I, I don't know how long it was, the door went open. I just walk out past the security guard and I called the cab, went home, and, <laughs> and I was surprised. They didn't come. You don't remember any of it. <laughs> and I just went back to bed and slept. Yes. I praise the Lord. She managed last week when she got back to say, hello, Joanne. And she kept sleeping during the Bible study. So we still had a piece of her sleep with us. I so, praise the Lord. I praise the Lord for every, I'm glad my sister is fine. Amen. Now, Pastor Jeff, do you want to add anything? I just thank the Lord for taking so. care of me. I uh going through some stuff and you know it's, it's easy to get discouraged and 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 fight back and talk back. And I just thank the Lord for keeping me and protecting me. And I know things are going to change and get better. Amen. Uh, I thank you for, I thank the Lord for keeping me through it all. Amen. Amen. I thank you. I thank God for the lessons we learned through them all. Yeah. You know, so it's a blessing because our story can bless others. Someone's coming in. Let's see if he's getting in. Timothy. He's connecting. <laughs> there he goes. Hello, Pastor Timothy. We were talking about Hello, testimonies. Pastor. We were talking about testimonies. Would you like to get one? Give one before we get started. Praise the Lord! I got healed from my 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 leg, so I don't have any problem with my leg again. I can walk now. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. God is Amen. good all the time. Yes, he is. I love testimony time. Wow. So it was interesting what you talked about because Pastor Jeff, today's topic is what is the what does the Bible say about anger? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> and we can all use this, you know, everybody has yes. their moments. We we get tested and tried. Oh yes. And, and yes, Mike, <laughs> so we get tested and tried and, and that's truly how we continue to grow. And then, yes. so I'm going to start on words that, that can fuel or diffuse anger. And we will see that in Proverbs 15, one. 
And I'll turn the camera to you, Mike. Uh, Proverbs 15, 1 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. That's true. That's true. Amen. I turned off the light because my bird's getting loud. And that's true, you know. Sometimes, you know, the, like I've said, the best answer sometimes is no answer. Just pray in your head. Amen. And it could be difficult because we get challenges in life. Yes. You know, but God did promise us that he we, He won't, there will be no temptation. He won't pull us through. Amen. And I thank God for that. Yes. So, you know, if any of you want to raise your hand about <clears throat> how you can relate to this <laughs> and how maybe a soft answer got you out of a very hard situation, feel free to lift up your hand. And Timothy, you know me, just wave your hand because I may not see the little reaction button. That's so... Just, my sister wants to say something. Yes, Mary. Well, uh, today I had an experience of uh, anger mm -hmm. because of all the people here has have been harassing me. Not everybody. <laughs> Not everyone, but some people. And I get I got mad, and then I say, "Whoa, Charlie, this is not you. Just mm -hmm. put your trouble to God." So I went upstairs and I started praying. Amen. And That's a wonderful me. testimony. Yes, that anger sometimes could do a lot of, uh, like what my, uh, Debbie said, self-control. Mm -hmm. Well, that's when I had to stop and just, I had to self-control and I learned to ease down with my anger. Amen. I'm glad your sister tell me because I don't see you. So if you lift up your hand, that way I could see. Uh, so any any time you want to chime in, just lift up your hands. Yeah, yeah. Also, anger leads to sin. So that's the worst one. And you did a good job, Mary, talking about how you went to God and prayed. Because we could take an ulterior motive, which is worse. Because once words are out, you can't take them back, right? So... In Genesis 49, 6, we will see this example. Okay, Genesis 49, 6. This, this is out of the King James Version because that's my favorite. I don't like that. Don't mince words and don't have to worry about somebody changing it. So, <clears throat> oh, my soul, come not thou unto their secret, unto their assembly. Mine my honor, honor, be not thou united. For in their anger... They slew a man, and in yeah, their self-will, they diggeth down a wall. Wow. So anger, wrath can cause a lot of terrible things if you act yes. upon it. Yes. And I like the way it started out. Say the beginning again. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul, come not thou into their secret. Amen. Unto their assembly, mine honor be not thou united for their anger they slew a man and in their self-will they dig down a wall well in the beginning he's actually talking to his soul that we can talk to ourselves and say sometimes say chill yeah. out <laughs> god's yeah. got this help me god chill out so we do have to talk to our soul you know sometimes and we can make it subject to jesus christ amen yeah. So I, you can just say in the name of Jesus, I order myself to reflect Jesus Christ through these situations. Yes. So that's a good reminder how it started that. It made me think hard on that. And also how we, do you want to add something? I'm just going to say, I said self. Yeah, I do that. I, I said, and I was self? thinking, I said, like, and I do that. I'll say self. <laughs> <laughs> so he was giving an example. Another way we can talk about staying away from anger we'll see in psalms 37 8 okay this is, says uh cease from anger and forsake wrath mm -hmm. fret not thyself in any wise to do evil amen so it's like anger and sin not that's what that reminds me of so we can exercise discipline you know we can't say that we never get upset we never get hurt we never get sad because it's not realistic, you know, we, we're emotional beings, but we can refrain the tongue. Amen. Mm -hmm. So 
also will see in Ephesians 4.31 an example of this. Ephesians 4.31 says, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Amen. Put it away, but also with malice. So we need to be, we have to come before God and, and you know, like, Lord, help cleanse me to be in a right standing with God, you know, and that's another thing about when, when I talk about refraining, you know, that we have to, the best way I look at it is if I don't want to sin against God because I know it hurts him. Yes. It makes it easier to say, you know, I'm not going to give into this moment, but Lord help me through with this moment. Because the last thing I ever want to do is think about hurting God, not, mm -hmm. not even others that you love, you know, but mainly the Lord, because, you know, if you're going to serve God with everything you have and love him and worship him and do things like his way, you're going to reflect that, you know, with the way you interact with others, including sometimes it's hard to how we, um, how we are with ourselves, because we can be hard on ourselves. And God doesn't want that. And that's a big one sometimes because I can fall in that category that I get frustrated with myself. And when I, so I started talking again, like we said, self. So I have to do that. I have to check myself, you know, and say, you know, I don't need to be that hard on myself. God knows our hearts. He knows our plans. He knows our future. He knows when we're trying and he knows when we submit our will to him, which I find that beautiful. And we'll also see that in Proverbs 29.8. Proverbs 29.8 says, Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. Wow. I don't know about you guys, but I want to be wise. Amen. Amen. So Sheila's trying to come in. <clears throat> hey, Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Praise the Lord that you're here. We're just talking about anger and what the word of God says about anger. So now we're on the fourth. But of course, I'll give the Bible verses. We're on the fourth point that says we should not sit in our anger. And we'll see that in Ephesians 4, 26. Hello, everyone. Thanks for, Hello, so Sheila. Thanks for letting me know, Joanne, what you're doing. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, uh, on this one says be ye angry and sin not let not the sun go down upon your wrath amen I think that's beautiful because if you are having a hard day and you get upset and you go to sleep like that well yes, wrath will make you bitter you can have bad dreams <laughs> because yeah. of what you're doing to yourself or yeah. you can wake up in a bad mood so it's better to clear that, clear yourself, just check yourself before God and, and not carry that burden because he doesn't want us to. Because when we carry those burdens, it's like a cancer, you know, and, and Mary understands having cancer. It, it It's like anger can eat at your bones. It's an ugly yeah. thing, you yeah. know, and it doesn't hurt the people around you. It hurts yourself when yeah. you're angry. And that's what people need to, you know, realize that you're hurting yourself because God wants so much better for us. And I praise him for that. Anger's kind of an offshoot of unforgiveness too. Yes. It really is. Yes. So in fact, in fact that's like a like a a secondary thing of, of unforgiveness is anger or just yeah, they one do leads in, one leads to the other. Amen. Also, we'll see that fools allow room for anger. And we'll see that in ecclesiastic. Seven nine. I got Proverbs twenty nine eleven. That's the last one. I had three of them. Ecclesiastic seven nine. Okay, we had that one in here. You probably didn't see it. Seven nine. That one is uh says be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry for anger 
resteth in the bosom of fools. Ooh. I don't want that to rest in me. I'll tell you no. that. No, 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 no. No, sorry. And so it's like, how do you feel when you're carrying a load? You know, and it could be other things besides anger, but we're talking about anger tonight. How do you feel when you're carrying that load? You feel miserable. You do. It's like a sense of oppression, right? Like yes. darkness, like you can't breathe. There's no way out. And so, and when it says that you're sitting in it, it makes me think that's a way of holding on to it. And God did not want us to hold on to anything negative. You know, it, it can affect our praise and worship with him. Yes. You know, because you're in a bad mood, it can affect your time with the Lord that you could get in the word. It could even affect listening and waiting for a word from him. You know, so it's kind of like I feel he's like, let it go and don't pick it back up. That's really important. So, yes, we have feelings, but it's a, a matter of controlling it how God wants us to. We can't depend on our flesh because we'll mess up every time. Yes, Mike. It's a lot like um oh, oh speaking of um never mind never mind I've, I've lost the thought. Okay. <laughs> if anybody wants to chime in, they're good. Joanne, okay. Joanne. Yes. This is Mayor Jane. When Hi. I that way, I go in my corner in my room and I ask the Lord to rebuke Satan away from me. Amen. All these. Uh, angry and all these uncomfortable feelings and I ask dear Lord rebuke Satan away from my soul amen because light and darkness can't work together can they that's no right. they can't you don't want to leave space for this anger no. and I know we want God's joy because God's joy is like nothing in this world it just overflows your cup it's beyond measure and yeah. it's something we can't offer joy if we're angry to others. No. You know, so we want to put our best foot forward to give the best. Okay, so the other example is Proverbs 19.3. Yeah, you missed a couple, but that's okay. 19.3. He programmed some things, but he missed a couple, so. Yep. Okay, here. I just lost where I was. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. Help me get back on here. They can hear you, I think. Okay. All right, go can ahead, Mike. Hear? Yeah, I lost the screen. Okay. Can you guys hear me even though I'm frozen here? I, I could hear you. Yeah. Okay, I don't know if I'll unfreeze, but you can hear me. Okay, Mike. Okay. The foolishness of man perverteth his way, and his heart fretteth against the Lord. Ooh. We definitely don't want to be foolish in our reactions, and we don't want to do anything against God, because God is a God of joy, peace. He's not the author of confusion. Amen. That was 19.3. That was one of these one, right? Yeah, and we also have the next one is Proverbs 29.11. The one I had? <laughs> okay. You guys aren't okay. frozen, though, right? I don't no. think you guys are. It's just me. Maybe Pastor Jeff. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> this is the one that, that reminds me of me. Okay. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it until afterwards. I'm bad for Getting mad and just, just saying what's on my mind. Yeah. I, I When he does that, I call it the truth slipping out. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead, the truth slip. And it's like, okay, you, you know, I said it's okay to say the truth, but sometimes you got to hold, hold back, back and not be so honest, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I say when, when, you know, he's in that situation. I'm like, I see the truth slipped out again, Mike. Yep. So, um. And the next point we have is how it can cause anger can cause division, which we definitely don't want. And we'll see that in Psalms 55, 3. Psalms 55, 3 says, because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the wicked, for they cast iniquity upon me 
and in wrath they hate me. Mm. So that's something that comes along with anger is wrath is hate. That's a hard, heavy word. I definitely wouldn't want that to accompany um anger. Let me see if she can get in. We're having a little bit of problems, but you guys are hearing me clear, right? Yes. Okay. We're talking about anger, Karen, and we are talking about different steps. I will share it with the group, these verses, and uh, why it's important for us to exercise. I'm just going to, you know, sum summarize self-control. So now we're on. I'm sorry, Lynn. I'm, I'm just trying to load this Zoom thing on my tablet, and I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's okay because i've been having trouble i blacked out on this camera twice now i'm frozen so we're getting there it's fine so another example about um that i had just mentioned was doing on anger today how we can cause division so another example of that verse is proverbs 30 33 surely the churning of milk bringeth, bringeth forth butter and the ringing of the nose bringeth, bringeth forth blood. So the forcing of wrath bringeth forth strife. Oh, Ooh, that just sounds ugly, doesn't it? Yes, it does. How anger can, can cause all this kind of confusion. You know, like I was saying earlier, that God's not the author of confusion. So we definitely don't want strife. And we're seeing all the different la layers and levels that come with anger as we're going on with these verses. And someone's trying to come in, but I don't see them. So maybe I'll see them pop back in. Oh, it might be Timothy. Yeah. How do I turn my camera off? Because I've got to eat my dinner. Okay. When you take your cursor, go to the left side, uh, the bottom, and you'll see where it says stop video. You're going to hit that. At the top left. Stop incoming the video, it says, or show my video in gallery view. Show non-video participants. Show name when participants join. Meeting topic, always show meeting controls. It says stop video. You'll see a video symbol by the mute sign. See what looks like mm -hmm. a camera? It says stop incoming video. I don't want to stop incoming video. I want to stop outgoing video. You see at the bottom of your screen when you take your cursor, it pops up like a a me like a microphone and next to it looks like a video no because this is a tablet a lenova tablet that i had to get oh my gosh i don't know how to do anything oh, joanne i messed everything up now i can't see anybody <laughs> well we can see you <laughs> you can see me but i can't see you <laughs> well i'm not concerned if you got to eat we're not concerned <laughs> everybody needs to eat we all need to eat one time or another so all right so in you just read Proverbs 15, 18 or not? Uh, 30, 33 is what I just did. Okay, so that other example we're going to find in Proverbs 15, 18. Okay. What's this, a pro what's this of? It's in the same ga category. Of what? About how anger can cause division. Okay. All right, it says um, 15, 18. Yeah. 15, 18. A rattle man stirreth up strife. But he that is slow to anger appeaseth strife. Wow. So just by keeping silent, we can just change the atmosphere. That's pretty loaded. That's heavy. Mm -hmm. um, there's Teresa. Hello. Welcome. Oh. So now, now we're on um, it, how it doesn't just hurt others, but how it hurts ourselves, which I briefly mentioned. But we'll look at the verses in Genesis 49.7. 49.7 says, Cursed be their anger, for it was fierce, and their wrath, for it was cruel. I will divide them in Jacob and scatter them in Israel. So when God even put confusion in the camp by scattering, we saw that in example two in the day of the Pentecost, how all these different languages and people got scattered everywhere because of confusion, because there was a sample where uh, they were trying to build a from pride a tower to reach heaven Babylon. and how how god stopped that pride and that's why everything was divided so we have to be careful it's like 
we have, you know, have to be careful how we use our tongue. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, and God will know he'll help you with that self-discipline as you bring it up. Plus it's a good thing to show others because we all go through it and we help each other and we strengthen each other. So as people see you exercising self-control, you know, it draws you closer because we have a better understanding of what is going on. And sometimes it's just as easy as just taking time to listen, you know, because jumping to conclusion can cause anger. So it's very important to be able to be good listeners as well. So righteousness and anger does not go together. I had mentioned that, and we're going to see that in James 1.20. You have Job. You had before that written down. Job eighteen four. Yeah, and Job. That yeah, that's also an example of how we don't want to hurt ourselves or others. Okay. So we're going to backtrack. That's Job eighteen four. He teareth himself in his anger. Shall the earth be forsaken for thee, and shall the rock be removed out of his place? Hmm. Well, I don't want to be removed out of my place. No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> that's a good example i don't i mean i want to be an out i want to be in good standing with god as much as possible amen. amen important you know like i mean god can only speak to remove us and that's uh you know that's a pretty serious thing that i don't want to stand on and then another example on righteousness i can't answer hun on righteousness uh, and anger they don't uh, mix together we'll see that in james 120 okay james 120 says for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of god wow and like i was saying before they can't mix together it's like oil and water you I, know i'm sorry i have to interrupt <clears throat> a minute because i have to tell you something i have this app on my phone it's the james um James, St. James, okay, now I can't even get to it. St. James Bible app. And today's thing is exactly what you're talking about. I can't believe this is, oh my God, speaking to me again. It, it's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. it's, Amen. Listen, Joy, often we speak before we have the opportunity to think about our words in the heat of the moment. We immediately express negative feelings without analyzing the uh, situation first we jump to conclusions when directing meetings and speak in haste with our children before evaluating all sides as leaders in any setting we must be tactful and make decisions by weighing all details instead of expressing emotions with our authority we must seek to meditate or mediate, I'm sorry, mediate justly and reflect the mercy of God with our decision making and the prayer is dear Lord Please forgive us when we jump to conclusions and fail to lead with mercy and grace. Guide us to reflect your character when you place us in a position of authority. In Jesus' name, amen. I mean, I just, that just blows my mind. This is what you're talking about. Amen. And also, it reminds me of the verse that says, when you mentioned parents, it says, parents, do not provoke your children to anger. So we have a big responsibility, not just as parents, but across the board, to not provoke someone to anger. Because mm -hmm. we have a responsibility in that equation, you know? So it's not just about the person getting upset, but we have to be, um, have our mindset that we will not cause that, that we will not do anything to provoke someone to anger. And that's very important, you know? So it goes on both sides. It's good, you know, good to reflect on that. And Joanne, read more. but it was Proverbs twenty nine eleven. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it, keepeth it until afterwards. Mm -hmm. After right? you meditated, it brought it to the Lord. Because if you walk, if you if you're gonna speak like you're in the flesh, that, that's where you're gonna have problems. Because we're supposed to anger and sin not, right? So it's very important to meditate and take it to God. Get into the Word. And then well, as you're reflecting and God, the important thing is trusting the God to give you the words when you're a heated situation. Were you going to say something? Mike? Yes, and then, if, then the one we're not allowed to use anymore. Children, don't anger your parents and have them make you go out and find a switch. 
Uh huh. <laughs> it goes both ways. You're right. Don't, so, oh, don't anger. anger. Uh, don't ang Yeah, exactly. Don't anger your parents. <laughs> don't anger your parents. Don't anger anybody. I take that that right. step further. You know. Spoil the rods. What is spoil the rods? Spoil the child the things out of the window these days. Yeah. Sadly, look at where the children are at. Amen. That's true. Okay. So now we're talking about confession mm -hmm. is a bridge to healing from anger. And we'll see that in Pro Proverbs 28, 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whose confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Amen. And, you know, we know to go directly to God, but we could take that a step far farther. And if we've hurt a friend or a family member, take it to them, you know, and never feel like, ne never feel that sense of pride where you can't humble yourself and say, I'm sorry. It's very important. In all decisions we make, it's important that we reflect God. And um, because some people don't know how to deal with these emotions or never you know, some people have not, they know in the wrong, but they don't know how to express it. So it's important of us, like us as children of God, that we can express that. So they may be able to learn from our mistakes, you know, so that's, it's good that we can confess with that openness. And we'll also find in first John one, nine. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Yeah, well, God is light. So anything that we practice when he comes into the world with the light is 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 against God because why light and dark can't walk together. But I praise him because if you're if you're in, in a dark situation, you turn on the light. Guess what happens? Darkness flees. Well, that's the same example we have with our God. You know, there the darkness cannot walk with that. So I praise him for that. And then we're going to find also. um we're going to talk about righteousness and anger, and we're going to find that in John 2, 3, 16, 13, 16. What happened? What happened? Can you hear? Can you guys hear me? Yes, I what? can. Okay. I will make sure you can hear. <laughs> 13 through 16? It's 2, 13 through 16. <clears throat> okay, that one. I think this is the last one, I believe. Um, one more. Okay. And the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he made a scourge of small cords, he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen poured out of the charges, changers, money, and over through the tables. And he said unto them that sold the doves, take these things hence, Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. Amen. Well, see, and it does show you you can have a righteous anger. Yes, amen. You know? yes. But we have to know how to express it. And God does not tolerate. When it, we come before God, we have to give him our best. We have to be holy and outstanding, you know, way that we need to be repentful. Because back in the day, if, if you know, someone went, if one of the leaders went into the holy temple, and was not right before God. He was in sin. Guess what? He would strike, be struck dead. He'd be struck dead in the temple. So we got a blessing by his mercy, you know, but he still expects that. The same from us. About the high priest going into the holy. Yeah, holy. the high. You remember about the high priest going in the holy holies? We yeah. talked about yeah, that. Slightest bit of sin on him. He would, be he would just dead. be struck dead. They'd and have so, tied to him. Yeah, and then he, they'd pull him out. So we, you know, we, by his grace, we don't have that situation, but God never changes his standards. His standards are still high, like go before him with a cleansed, pure heart and make sure, like, I know, like when I pray or if I'm on way, let's say I went to a revival or church, 
I'm always prayed up and like, Lord, let me be in good standing because I want to give my, I want to give God my best. So when he was talking about the righteous anger here, Jesus had, he wanted to give God his best, not to be corrupting the temple. Uh, Amen. And I take that a step farther because our bodies are considered a temple of God as well. So we don't want to corrupt our bodies. Amen. Amen. So we will see in Ephesians 4.26 will be the last one. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Amen. So tonight we learned if you're upset, make it right. Don't go to sleep angry. No. So that we could have that good old smile in the morning and not worry about having anything like resentment or anger inside. Because when you carry that, it's truly ugly. We're hurting ourselves more than anybody around us. And plus, we want to be a good example to the Lord. So how, I mean, I'd love to know what you guys have learned by this, what you can share and examples that, you know, through what I've given or examples in your life that you can talk about to help others out there that are listening to this subject. Does anybody want to add something? I'm not angry that I burned my steak because I was trying to get this on my tablet. <laughs> <laughs> and praise god you can marinate it and make it good so it's like we we can look at such the opposite way of things like our human nature can get mad about things but we could look at it as another one so i praise god you still have that steak i know and... i praise i praise god that i didn't burn both sides and i praise god that i was able to get this on my tablet because i couldn't figure it out for the life of me Amen. And you got pretty lights in the background that I'm seeing. Yes. Or that's so nice to look at. It's calming. Yes. So anybody well, else? I'm at me huh? while I'm eating. <laughs> I don't want you looking at me while I'm eating. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I don't know how you did that. That's amazing. I wish I can put something in my background, you know. Yeah. Um. So anybody else have anything to add about this topic? We say, we say and do a lot of things that we regret later when we're angry. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's right. Oh, yes. And the important thing is because we have a loving father. If we go to him, he's quick to forgive. And I think we got to learn by that example because a lot of times, oh, look at the twins. I love you guys. But a lot of times, like you could go to somebody and like you ask for repentance and they're not quick to forgive but as a, a character of god we need to be quick to forgive and that's why when people come to me and say i'm sorry i'm like you're already forgiven we don't even need to go to that step to hear it to to um be forgiving of people you know and that's important because a lot of times anger you do carry unforgiveness so would you like to add anything, Timothy? I'll just go ahead and say your name, even though you didn't wave. You can feel free to add something, words of wisdom here. Yes, uh, if we are angry and uh, we are rather hurting ourselves because uh, the Bible, like you rightly read, do not uh, let the sun go down with you still angry. Mm -hmm. So if you let go, you are, you are allowing fresh air. You are allowing the spirit of God in you to have more time to speak to you inwardly so that you get solution to uh, what actually angered you. But if you don't allow the spirit in you to work out and you are dealing with it personally, you 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 are kind of like telling the spirit that you know more than the spirit. So you don't have to put the, 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 the horse before or the cat before the horse. You rather have to put the horse before the cat. So let God speak in you in every situation. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's Amen. very important. Yeah, that's very important. And um 
I just love the qualities of God. When you're in doubt, just go back to his word, you know, in every situation, because we don't want to carry things on our back, like any bitterness or any other thing. And that brings out to ourselves and others, you know? So, you know, I think this topic is really important to talk about, you know, um, we have all sinned and fall, fell um, short of the glory of God. But, you know, I think there's a reason he talks about these subjects so we can check ourselves. Amen. Um, I'll just ask Mary, do you have anything else to add yourself? Me? Yeah. Do you want me to sing? Well, you sing too, but do you want to add anything else about the study? I really love the the. The Bible study, it makes me, there's a growth in me and the love of the Lord. And I know he's, been, he's in with me. And I pray for every, every pastors and everyone of the Bible study. Amen. And it's nice to have this family here of God. To Amen. talk and meditate on his word because we grow together. We grow stronger. We grow together as a team, a body of Christ. And what, you know, and if when we get to that state where we just let it go and give God like the anger that we're talking about, that leaves room for God's blessing where we can be used. But if we hold on to that, we can't be used in that situation. You know, it's like you can't, you know, it's like pouring something into a dirty cup, you know. It, it doesn't have any value when you hold on to that. So um, anyone else? If you guys don't have anything to add, we have we have a song from Sister Mary to end this before prayer. So um, yeah, feel free to sing a song. I, I, she's a blessing because she said she would do this. And I praise God that she stepped up. Amen. I wait to roam on the Sister Joanne? I, she's frozen. Yeah, she's frozen. Okay, let's pray. Any prayer requests? 
Oh, thank you. I had it turned. I had my sound off. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it was getting ready to ask. Thank you so much, Pastor Jeff. <laughs> Does anybody have prayer requests? For everybody. Yes, I, I like to have prayer for these two uh, persons that are causing our bullying people in this building. Their name is Ada and Cindy. Okay. Anybody else have requests? We'll try to put them together and we can all pitch in and pray together. I have prayer requests that I need the recording off, Joanne. Okay. Let me do that. Let's do a silent request. Just let me know when everybody else is done. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll close off and I'll talk to you at the end. Um, okay. Anybody else have anything to pray about? Yes. I would like to pray for Larry and Debbie. Amen. And for the rough time that she's having right now. And my okay. prayers are going for them. Okay. I'm going to pray for all your health issues. All right. I'll just close my eyes. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for each and every one of these people that are on tonight for their obedience. Despite problems, Father God, with the recording, Lord, that they're here that everybody has a heart for you and that's why they're here for their dedication father god that we can learn together as a body of christ father i bring up larry the situation is very difficult as a family of god to watch what's going on father god but you know the situation father and you are a god that can heal this situation father god you mm -hmm. can bring peace to the storm father god mm -hmm. i ask that you bring peace to the storm with what they're going through father i pray for the people in the bill and Annette and her sister's building, Father God, that are causing issues, Father. I just come against that spirit of strife in the name of Jesus, and I lose peace that surpasses all understanding on that situation, Lord. Because, Lord, we know that that ugliness cannot stand in your presence. So, Lord, I just ask that you send forth your advocating warning angels by their side, Father, that Annette could heal quickly of where she's sore. I thank God that it could have been worse, and you protected her on her way back, Father Amen. God. I pray for Pastor Jeff, any strife in his life that he's having, Father God. I pray that it's re it's removed in the name of Jesus by the blood of the Lamb, Father God. Give him wisdom and understanding in all situations, whatever he is going through, Father God. Touch his heart where he needs it, Father God. And Lord Jesus, wherever, if there's any pain, Father God, any sadness, Father, I pray that it's released in the name of Jesus. Protect his family, Father God. And Lord, I just pray for unity wherever conflict has been trying to come into his life, Father God. I pray over Timothy. I thank you so much for healing his legs, Lord. But Lord, I just thank Amen. you that that's a wonderful praise report, Lord. Amen. And I pray you continue Amen. to use him, Father, that he may be able to exercise that authority as a man of Christ to be able to work for you, Father, and bring be a soul winner. I pray every one of us can be a soul winner, Father God. I pray over Teresa. I thank you that she's here tonight, Father God. In any way that she's going through, Father Father God, I give a silent request, Father God, that you just raise her, Father God, continue to raise her to new levels, strengthen her, Father God, take care of every situation, Father God. And Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to, I just pray these things over by the blood of the lamb in Jesus name, I and pray. And, and for health, anybody, Father God, Everybody. including me, any health issues, Father, I release it in the atmosphere, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And I pray also if anybody is in need. Father, that you will provide every provision that people will not go without, Father God. And I'm going to close it out. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to unrecord this. Um, where's that record button? Okay. I'm not seeing that record thing. I see reactions, but not that. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back to you, Karen. Okay, honey. Thank you. Okay, no problem. God bless. We love you. See you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right. Thank you.